This is SSP TV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. An eSports coaching program is coming to a college in our area, and we'll tell you all about it next. Hello friends, I hope you're having a great day, and I thank you for spending part of it with us. I'm Ken Carr with your local information. MMI Preparatory School in Freeland has a new head of school. Teresa Long will take over the position on August 15th. The former head of school, Justin Kleinheider, resigned in June. Long was a member of the school's board of directors and her kids went to MMI. She graduated from Wyoming Area High School, Misericordia University, and she has a Master of Science in Nursing with a concentration in education from Wilkes University. In a release, Long says, quote, a rich history, a long track record of success, and dedicated faculty and staff make MMI a unique educational experience, and I cannot wait to be part of the day-to-day -day operation, unquote. Long is the 13th head of school in MMI's 143-year history. Now let's get to our news feature about eSports with Lisa Sugar. Beginning this fall, Luzerne County Community College in Nanticoke will be offering a new program, what I'm sure is going to be a very popular program. It is eSports Coaching, and it's a diploma program. And for more about it, we're pleased to be joined right now by Libby Yeager, who is the Dean of Curriculum at Luzerne, and also Kevin Jones, an assistant professor and the coordinator of communication arts at Luzerne County Community College. Thank you both for joining me. It's a pleasure. Kevin, I'm going to start with you. I'm hearing a lot about esports these days, as many people are. It's becoming very popular. So why was now the time that LCCC decided that they should present this program? It's interesting. Libby and I have been on the road looking at different esports uh, facilities and stuff over the last couple of years. And it is a big push in higher education. I think one of the things that we had to look at was the demographic of the students coming in. And we really wanted to look at the data that was out there. And the interesting fact, which a lot of people just think, hey, they're gamers. You know, these, these kids just spend all their hours inside playing. They don't have any plans for the future. And what we have found is uh, traditionally 13 through 17 year olds. You could even push that into 19 year olds. The majority of those, those, those kids Gaming is part of their social life. And so the one thing that is interesting to us is out of all those students, a majority of them are going to look for employment in STEM related fields. And they're interested in more than just gaming. And thus is what the first reason that we're doing the management. And it's going to lead into other curriculums as well. The cool thing about uh, esports is for both boys and girls, uh, it's the ability that they could all play on the same team. It's very diversified. And a lot of them, that's their social outlet. And at Luzerne County Community College, we, we believe in the students. We believe that we can offer them a solid education while doing the things that they're passionate about. And that leads us into uh, the different curriculums that we're looking at and so on. Wow, you brought up some really interesting points that I didn't even think of playing on a level playing field. That's really great. So now, uh, Libby, tell us all about this. What will the curriculum include? Because this is a diploma program. So tell us what that means and what the students will be learning. Diploma programs are short-term training programs designed to be completed in one semester. What students in our eSports coaching diploma will be learning is all the parts that they need to know to coach in eSports. And while you think it's gaming and sitting at a computer, eSports coaching requires many of the same skills that coaching the football team or the basketball team or the wrestling team require. You have to know about nutrition. You have to know about the um, means of the sports competition. Here it'll be a computer in eSports. You have to know how to schedule your students. You have to know how to place them on the teams. You have to know how to plan an event. So students in our eSports coaching program will be developing all those skills. That's amazing. Like this is something that I, I didn't really realize what it truly is until you're explaining it all. So then when they graduate, what type of jobs will they be getting? 
coming out of the esports coaching diploma program, they'll be eligible to be esports coaches at two, four year and high school teams. Um, we're hoping in the very near future to have an esports business management program and an esports design program. So they're both in the works, but they're not completed yet, which will provide students even additional opportunities. Who is eligible to take this program? Do you need a degree before you do this? Or can you do this like right out of high school? How, who can do this? Anybody can do the eSports mm -hmm. diploma program. One of the things that we've learned is that, especially in post-secondary institutions, we don't want to hire someone that does not have a credential. And a lot of gamers who would be great coaches have no credential. So this eSports diploma gives them that credential. Wow, that's wonderful. So for people watching right now, how do they find more information? How do they enroll in this? Is there a limit? They can go to our website and get the information on the website and they can contact our admissions office. They'd be happy to help them get started on an application and apply to the program. Well, I think this is fascinating. I'm sure many people will be interested in this and I hope to talk with you again in the future, maybe once the program is up and running to see it exactly as it is. Today's news feature is brought to you by Feisner's Ford and Freeland, who is celebrating 75 years in business. Give them a call at 570-636-3920, or you can log on to FeisnersFord.com. Former Hazleton Mayor Mike Marsicano will discuss current events happening around our country on a new show on SSP-TV. You can watch the debut of And That's The Way It Is with Mike Marsicano this Thursday on SSP-TV at 12 p.m. and there'll be an encore presentation at 10.30 p.m. It will also be available at SSPTV.com and on our YouTube channel. For additional times, check your local listings. The show will also be available on SSP-TV in Pottsville on Friday and Wilkes-Barre on Saturday. Time now for weather on SSP-TV News. Here's our forecast from the National Weather Service on Thursday, a 30% chance of showers with thunderstorms also possible after 11 a.m. It will be partly sunny with a high near 83 degrees. On Thursday night, a 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms also possible before 5 a.m. Then a slight chance of showers. It will be partly cloudy with a low around 65 degrees. On Friday, 50% chance of showers with thunderstorms also possible after 11 a.m. It will be partly sunny with a high near 78 degrees. Friday night, partly cloudy with a low around 58 degrees. Saturday, mostly sunny with a high near 80 degrees. Saturday night partly cloudy with a low around 58 degrees. Sunday mostly sunny with a high near 82 degrees. And Sunday night partly cloudy with a low around 62 degrees. SSP TV News will be right back with our community and sports features. The Greater Hazelden Chamber of Commerce will have Chamber Day at the Water Park on July 29th from 11 a.m. until 6 p.m. at Montage Mountain. For more information you can visit hazeldenchamber.org SB TV News would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Jason J. Martonic, age 43, of Nuremberg, the Arvin Funeral Home, will announce the arrangements. Louis A. Maylath, age 93, of Hazleton, services will be held in Wallingford. And Thelma Yersher, age 96, of Hazleton, mass will be held on Wednesday at 10 a.m. at Church of St. Joseph. Friends will make on Tuesday from 4 to 7 p.m. at the French Bonham Funeral Home. The obituary report is brought to you by Moran Funeral Home, third generation family owned funeral home serving all faiths since 1939. Located at 229 West 12th Street in Hazleton, call 570 454 8341 and go to moranfuneralhome.com. <laughs> 